Hi everybody, welcome to the Lisa Love Stitch and Floss Tube channel. Um, I'm coming to you from sunny and quite warm Brisbane. Um, it's winter here but at the moment it's 20 degrees and I've got a short sleeve on and I've actually got the ceiling fan going because there's no breeze so it's quite warm, especially here on the deck in the sun. So I'm sorry I'm squinting but I was thinking you probably don't want to look at my sunnies but I don't know I'll see how I go if it gets too much for my eyes because I'm light sensitive I'll put my sunglasses on um, but I'm sorry <laughs> but I'll try and get through it without my glasses on I've got um, my pot of tea this morning I got this as a gift when I left work a few years ago when I left one of my jobs and it comes in a cute little tray for the teapot and I've got my I'm not sure what brand that is and then I've got my um, 1930s polka dot rose pol polka rose um, by Royal Albert it's like a reproduction and it had it, the gold starting to come off it but it does have gold on the rim and the handle um, and I got this off Wayne's mum and dad um, a few years ago um, and um, I did. I broke my milk jug, so I'm using a vintage egg cup. How cute <laughs> for my milk! <laughs> it is. Oops. Good one, Lisa. I just spilt my milk everywhere. I don't know what it is. Let's not worry about it because I'm going to spill milk everywhere. Where's Sooty when you need it? She's under my feet. Oh yeah, yeah. Can't take me anywhere. So I'm just going to pour a nice cup of tea. Oh, there's a bit of a breeze now. That's better. The sun goes off this deck in another half an hour. Hour. It moves away from where I'm sitting, so it'll get a little bit better as time goes on. I hope you've all been really well. Um, thank you to any new subscribers. Um, love seeing people come back. Welcome if this is your first time viewing my floss tube channel. Um, I talk mostly about cross stitch, but I also have other hobbies that I like to share on here, such as knitting, um, sometimes crochet, and um, sewing. And I have an Etsy shop, which I also do a little bit of a shop update at the end of the video. Um, I'll first talk about the cross stitch, and then I'll move to the um, to the other stuff at the end so if you don't want to continue watching you can move on to the next video um, otherwise you can stay tuned for whatever I've got to show you <laughs> um, gosh those crows again they're very annoying aren't they anyway and I apologize we've got um, neighbors that are dropping loads of rock pebbles off into their yard and it makes every now and then it makes a terrible noise so I apologize for that just add some milk to my tea Um, yeah, so um, I'm sorry again that it's been so long. We've just had a bit of a hiccup in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, our geriatric cat, Miss Pearl, which you may have seen on previous videos if you're a long-time viewer. Um, she was 20 years and four months. We had to sadly make the decision um, in discussion with the vet um, that her time had come she'd had enough and um, wasn't doing too well with her eyes and stuff so she was in discomfort and not able to s she was falling over a bit she was very wobbly on her legs and everything like that and she just tired and had enough so we did the right thing and it's the hardest decision as a pet owner you'll ever have to make I mean I was <laughs> telling her please please pass away in your sleep let me find you a gone when you've just been asleep peacefully on the bed or something but no we had to um, have her put down and um, it's the first time I've had a dog put down when I was younger but I didn't go in um, and so this was my first time having to make the decision myself and take her in um, the vets were wonderful um, they did a really lovely um, service for us um, they made it as 
comfortable and peaceful for her. Um, so, um, what was it a couple of weeks ago? It was the 3rd of, 3rd of June um, in the afternoon. We booked it for the afternoon. So we had the day with her and then in the afternoon when it was going to be quiet at the vets, um, we took her down and which is just around the corner from us and I had a nice fluffy pink blanket from home for her to lie on um, so she'd feel comfortable that she had the smell of something from home and um, we took her in but Wayne waited outside in the waiting room and I just stayed with her. He just gave her um, a heap of opiates to get her into a spacey mode so she didn't know you know anything and so I stayed with her till that kicked in and um, shortly thereafter I left and he came in and and um, gave her the lethal injection so um, and then we got the vets organized for pets in peace to come and collect her which they did that night I thought she'd have to be at the vets overnight but they took her that night and they were very kind they rang us that evening to say that she was safely in their care and it, they treated her just like a human um, and even offered us a chance to have a viewing of her before her cremation but we decided not to um, that's not for us but um, I just want to remember her happy anyway I held her till she went and um, and then yeah, they organised um, the cremation and we decided on a pot plant urn. So it has an urn in the back of it and it's a sandstone carved pot plant, planter, and it's like a square. And um, it'll have Pearl, um, Miss Pearl and um, the date 2001 to um, 2021. And um, she, we just got a call the other day to say that they'll be bringing her home on Friday next week so that'll be nice to have her back home and um, it was a very um, I, I feel emotional now talking about it that I got over it <laughs> sorry anyway sorry about that I thought I'd had myself under control but <laughs> Obviously, it still makes me upset to talk about her. It was only two weeks ago, and when someone, when a pet has been part of your life for 20 years, um, she's seen all my lifestyle, lifetime milestones. It's it's such a big thing to lose her, and we're still getting used to not having her around the house. Um, anyway, the pets in peace will deliver her home, and I believe they. Do it very formally the guy turns up in a suit with white gloves and hands her over to us so that'll be very emotional but nice to have a home and we need to pick out some flowers I'm thinking some succulents would look nice in there and they'll be easy to maintain and we'll just put them in the planter and bring her out on the deck so she can enjoy the views like she used to um, from the French doors on the bedroom so anyway so <laughs> that out the way and on to more positive things. <laughs> oh, um, <coughs> Sooty's sitting at my feet <coughs> under my chair, so sorry about her barking. <laughs> and Paris is wandering around occasionally. God love Paris, she's uh, in heat, her first heat. And um, yeah, she's become a little woman. <laughs> um, so anyway, but she's handling it pretty well. She has been a bit snippy of late um, with Sooty and a bit impatient with her and snappy. So, but I guess us girls, we know what PMS is like, don't we? <laughs> so um, anyway, she's handling that well. So we don't need to do anything at the moment. Um, the, the breeder, we just let her know um, that she's in her first heat. And um, she said at 12 months, when, when she's 12 months old and she goes into her um, heat then we'll take her over to have a growth check and a check to make sure she's all healthy and good for um, that side of things reproductive side of things and then um, another six months after that she'll be rechecked again when she goes into heat and they'll decide if she's ready to have her first litter so 
and then she'll only have two or three litters and that's it and that, then she'll get to six so anyway so that's good to know what we're working towards and we don't have to do anything straight away um i did have to get her some um doggy nappies just in case we need them but so far she's all fine um not that you needed to know that too much information sorry <laughs> anyway wayne's just outside um he's been painting the doors the internal doors of our house so he's doing a really good job on that so hopefully we'll be able to get some of those back up and then we can lock shut the doors to the bedrooms and things and then the dogs can run up and down the hallway without getting into things they shouldn't um what else has been happening um i recently got this bargain at i should leave it till later to show you what i acquisitions but anyway this cool paint um print is a jocelyn proust print and they have been on sale they normally there goes the pebble. They're normally um, $30 and they come fully framed and everything. They didn't have the wire. I don't know why they didn't include wire, but they've got the hooks to hang on the wall. So I just have to go to the framers and get some fra um, framing wire. And yeah, this was down to $12 on sale, 60% off. So woohoo, um, bargain. So I got this one, and if you're if you're not aware, Jocelyn Proust has um, her artwork in canvases like this, and um, quilt fabric, um, ribbons and embellishments, um, yes, uh, cups and mugs and stuff, and that's all Australiana themed. So all the birds, all the different birds and flowers. Um, so I like this one with a cockatoo, so I'm going to get um, some command hooks and I'll hang this up hopefully above my um, desk with my private computer on, like my personal computer, not my work computer, and have that up on that wall because it's blank and that way when I'm having a meeting on Zoom for work, there'll be something for people to look at behind me, not just a blank wall. And I've set up, now that I've finished uni, um, I'm not sure that I'm going to pass, but anyway, now that I've finished uni, um, I've set up my big new sewing machine on that desk and put the computer in the corner. That way, it, the machine's very heavy, and so it, it's a bit too heavy for the IKEA fold-down table, the leaves. So I didn't want it to collapse and smash the machine. So I've put that machine on that desk so it's easier for me to sew, and that leaves the other ikea table in the middle of the room free with my cutting mat so i can cut fabric and iron with my ironing pad and um makes it much more streamlined and i've got my overlocker on one end of that desk so that works out well um i still need to rearrange that room a bit it's a bit packed at the moment <laughs> um but i'll get there eventually um and then yesterday um we went uh to um, a day trip to esk so we were going to go to brunswick heads which is on the news just across the new south wales border however because of covid in bondi um in sydney uh the borders now have border passes to get across to New South Wales and back again and we just didn't want the hassle of having to print out a border pass and then they sometimes change the requirements so then you've got to print another one out and what are you going to do you're out and about you're not carrying a printer in the car with you so we just went it's less hassle we'll just go somewhere else so we drove to the country town of Esk um, it's about an hour and a half from where we are in Brisbane and um, it's surrounded by mountains and it's near the Diagula Ranges um, and they had markets on that day and oh my god there's so many people there was coach loads of um, retirees turning up to have a look at the town and um, heaps of people around it was really heaving um, but it was good where we found a picnic spot in the park in the middle of town um, there was no one sitting near us so that was good so we had a barbecue picnic there and we had a wander with the dogs through part of the markets the other part you needed a gold coin donation and we don't carry cash so 
we couldn't go in. And the CWA, the Country Women's Association Hall, had a morning tea and lunch on as well as a craft show. So I went in and had a wander, but you needed cash um, in, if you wanted to purchase anything. But I didn't see anything anyway that jumped out at me. And um, But I usually do like to try and buy something at those things, but I didn't have the cash. So because I like to support local um, crafters. Anyway, um, then we drove, after lunch, we drove from there to um, through the little town, country town of Tugulua, which I'll have either put footage in at the beginning or at the end of this um, video. And um, so that's a really cute little town. And it's like this really European style medieval um, church. So we drove past that and I got some video of that one, which you'll see. And yeah, just a really cute little old fashioned main street with a pub and some shops and yeah, just real old school stuff. Um, and then we drove home via Mount Me. And um, at the top of Mount Me, we had a stop at the lookout and you get sweeping views of the Glasshouse Mountains on the Sunshine Coast. Okay. <laughs> now the rocks combined with the neighborhood dogs, which I'm sure our dogs are going to set off in a minute. Um, anyway, so that was a really nice day trip. Um, it was freezing yesterday and windy, like icy winds um, blowing like a gale. Oh, we did stop at Wyvernho Dam as well and we watched um, the um, SES, um, which is the like... Um, emergency services um, they were doing like a trial training run out on the dam with their big yellow boats so that was interesting to see and um, yes yeah, so it was a really nice day out despite the gale force type winds <laughs> uh, and the icy cold luckily I had um, my winter woolies with me and um, yeah and then today it's like just as sunny as it was yesterday but there's not the strong winds that we had there's just a, a slight breeze now so that's good um so yeah so that's pretty much all we've been up to um yeah uh, we did go to Bribey last weekend we just wanted a quiet weekend because we're still working through losing pearl and so we just had a quiet weekend Wayne did a kayak across at Bribey and yeah so it was just a nice quiet picnic day and um, that's about it really so um, yeah so now I'll get into the cross stitch because I'm sure you're all waiting for me to get round to that and I'm like been talking for 18 minutes <laughs> I'm a bit more organized today I've actually ironed stuff for you <laughs> And I've put it on my, um, this is my wool, 100% 100% wool felt um, ironing mat. They're great for their quilters things. I got it on Amazon. They're really great because um, you can just have it on your cutting mat to do your quick ironing when you're sewing um, rather than getting out a whole ironing board. My sewing room does not have room for an ironing board. There's absolutely no room, so... Anyway, this first piece I'm going to show you, this is my whips, is, let me find it, so where's the picture? This is December 25th Merry Christmas Pin Keep by Stacey Nash Primitives. There's a cute snowman, a post vintage looking postage stamp with 25 on it, if you can see that there. Little Christmas tree and some snowflakes, it's really cute. I think it's turning out quite big. Um, I think I'm going to um, get this framed rather than making into a pillow because it'll be too big. And I think it'd be nice to have a Christmassy thing framed to bring out each Christmas. And it won't cost that much to frame because it's an, it's not huge by framing standards. So I've left a good two to three inch um, border so that um, I'm covered. This is on a uh, 32 count Wichelt Belfast Linen Dirty, um, eight and three quarters by six and a half inches. And um, 
I only got endive in the gentle art threads. I only got endive and um. Endive and fragrant clothes because that was all that was available when I ordered it from 123 Stitch. It's so hard for us in Australia to get um, fancy floss, they never have everything that you want. So I just get a few things and then I make up the rest with whatever I've got in my DMC stash. Um, so the I got this and that didn't realize because. It's hard when you're ordering online, you don't know all the colours. Um, and this is actually all I'm going to be using this for, is for the snowman's nose, for his carrot nose. And then this green is used for the 25 in the stamp and the tree, the Christmas tree, that's it. But that's okay because I'll use it on other things. And this is my scissor fob that I have these in my store, in my Etsy shop. Um, so... Not my scissor fob. <laughs> thread keep. That's my thread keep. And all my thread keeps come with these um, rings, thread rings for you to use, which um, easily open up. Yeah, so I've got those two. Um, so that's it there. And I made a boo boo, a big boo boo. But I'll, sh I'll talk about that in a second. So this is what I've done so far. So I've got December finished and I've done the 25 and I'm just working the stamp around it in the red. And the red is DMC 816 and the black is 610 and the green is the end eye. So I stuffed up the hat. That's the snowman's hat. And you know when you miss a thread and you and it gets out of whack? Like you know when you're supposed to go over two threads but it's so hard to see, especially I was stitching this at night. I stuffed it up, then I tried to fudge it. It's not working. <laughs> you know when you know you've got to pull it out but you don't want to, you just want to like keep going and then it makes it worse because it's more you've got to pull out? That's what I did. So yeah, so that hat... I have to pull everything out of it, the whole lot, and start again. So I thought I don't want it to stall because that's what I was doing. I hadn't touched it for a day or two. And I went, nah, it's just going to sit there in limbo because of this. So I went, just ignored that and I went ahead and started the stamp. And I'm going to do the rest and then I'll come back and worry about fixing this hat. Otherwise, I don't want it to sit in languish in my whip pile because it's only a short um piece like a small piece i want to get it done so i could have it hopefully framed for christmas that would be really good and have that ready for this year um yeah so that's that whip i have only worked on two things recently um i think after i finished uni i was just a bit brain dead and so i've just um I just thought I'll have palette cleanser and I want to do some more smalls so that I have too many big projects and I don't get the satisfaction of finishing something and thanks Rebecca for reminding me that um, it's good to have like some smalls in my whips um, on the go so that's what I've been doing. So this yarn, I know this linen is 32 count, I don't think it, it's not hand dyed or anything, it's just um, I think it's Vigart because it's got an orangey colour thing on the edge. But I don't know. It was just free linen that I got off a lady at my cross stitch group. So um, I've had that in my stash. It was a nice long big, big piece. So I've got plenty of fabric left for other projects. Um, and I've started this one on here, which is a Halloween one, which let me just dig down deeper into the bowels of my box here. Oh. Oh. Where is it? Well, that'll serve me right. 
I haven't got the paper here. Oh. oh, that's annoying. Sorry about that. I don't. It's milkweed and broomsticks, or broomsticks and milkweed, or something. Pumpkins and I don't know something. I think this is Brenda Gervais. You're probably all yelling, but anyway, don't worry about this. This is just an old project that I need to frog that I started and didn't like the fabric for that particular project. Anyway, this is October 31. I haven't done the 31 obviously yet. I've just done October. I've finished the witch and her broomstick and the basket with the milkweed or whatever, milk thistle. And um, that must be some plant that grows in the US. And um, the pumpkins I've started. So I've got a cute crow over here. So I just used DMC for this one, just what I had in stash. Um, I also used. Was it that one? No. I used, let me have a look, anyway, I used just some random DMC and some of it, um, like the white on her dress was actually cream, I used um, some gum nut silk thread that I had in stash as well for the stars and then the other, the original is like a lot darker, it's more primitive, but this one I just did pale pink DMC for her skin and then a rosy pink for her cheeks. I just wanted it to look cheerful, um, so that's what I did. So I'll just give you one more look at that. And these are like in silk, gum nut silk thread, and they're um, just some stars. Yeah, so... That's her there, and that's the gum nut silk in her dress there in the pale colour. Yeah, so I was very happy with that. So that's, I've only got to do the rest of the thistle stuff and the pumpkins and then the 31 with one more crow on top of her broom. And that's it, and then it's done. So that's an almost finished project. So that's my two whips that I've been working on since I chatted last with you. And then I have one FO, but it's not an FFO yet, but I hopefully will finish that by the next video. Um, it's Baby It's Cold Outside. Now, I did not do the whole pattern. So there's a border, a green border, and I didn't do that. And I didn't put the extra writing up the top. I just put Baby It's Cold Outside down the bottom. And this is in honour of Leanne Malzuski of Lost in Floss, who passed away just over 12 months ago um, from breast cancer um, so everyone was doing this as part of a sale um, so I just did the this bit with the flowers and then it's not a cardinal but I added in a little red breasted robin and when you see a robin apparently it means um, happiness or something happy is coming into your life so I wanted to think of Leanne bringing joy into our life and um, you know we continue to share the joy of stitching even though she's gone so I put her initials LM next to the birdie so that was just done in random DMC that I had as well as I think the roof is done in gum nut silk thread in the sort of off-white as well as some of the snow and the rest of the snow up here is like um, Blanc in DMC and I put gold like a goldy color in the windows to sort of show like someone's home and the robin I got um, off a chart that I bought on um, Etsy and I just did it one over one so that it would fit neatly on that um, in that spot there next to the tree so that's baby it's cold outside so that's nice to have a finish 
and what I plan on doing is putting a border with some quilted blocks and making it into a wall hanging which hopefully I'll finish before Christmas this year so that I can hang it up and I'll think of Leanne because she really loved Christmas and winter and stuff like that um, so yeah so um, I'm just looking at some different blocks that I could do and see how I can sort of I might have to add a border to this to make it the right size to fit you know six inch or 12 inch quilt blocks um, around the top or the bottom I'm not sure if I want to do at the top and the bottom or just have a border and then just do some quilt blocks at the bottom or something and because Leanne loved quilting and I want to do it in reds and creams or something like with Christmas fabric um, if I can because she loved red red was her favorite color so yeah so that's a really nice finish and I'm glad to have that done I couldn't work on it for a long time because I just felt so sad that we lost Leanne so I thought now it's been 12 months I need to pull my finger out and get that done <laughs> so there's that and by the way this works out as a really great because that hard well if I give it a good shake obviously it falls off but otherwise it it just sticks to there like a fuzzy board and makes it easy to present my things so I don't know why I didn't think to use this before anyway now I know <laughs> So that's that. So that's all my cross stitch um, whips and FOs. Um, what am I going to talk about next? I'll talk about cross stitch acquisitions. That way, unless you want to see what I've got in my shop, that's all the cross stitch stuff out the way. Um, so I only have one, apart from I bought the Stacey Nash Primitives December 25, I bought that and started that since I saw you last um, from 123 Stitch. Obviously nothing can go travelling alone. Um, so I also bought this chart which is by the Scarlet House and it's Strawberry House Pin Keep and Scissor Weight. And I think I will, I don't know, I think I will, I'll see how it turns out. I think I will keep it as a pin keep, like a cushion and I'll take it out of the packet for you isn't it cute I love strawberries and look at that house that house is gorgeous I can't wait to stitch that house although white stitches always look a bit messier hopefully it'll still look good but it reminds me of the white farmhouse sampler that I stitched on yeah I really love it and then there's that cute little scissor fob so this one uses Gentle Art, Sampler Threads, Wood Trail, Parchment, Cherry Bark, Pomegranate, Old Hickory, Onyx, Heirloom Gold and Piney Woods. And I was only able to obtain from 123 Stitch Old Hickory, Heirloom Gold, Wood Trail and Piney Woods. The rest I'll just fudge with whatever I've got <laughs> in my DMC stash or whatever because it's too hard to get them. You you got to buy them from multiple places online well then you got to pay multiple lots of postage so it ends up costing you an exorbitant amount so it's not worth it so um, and I don't have I mean I do have there's a stitching shop but it's on the other side of town it's just a hassle to get to um, because it's not open every day and it's on the other side of town so we never go that side really so um, I guess I could make the effort to go there but I haven't so anyway that's just the way that is so that's my acquisition um, and apart from that the only other acquisitions I got for stitching was this beauty <laughs> for when you're traveling or I'm sitting in the lounge and I don't want to blind Wayne with my big ot light um, I can put this on so oops it's got these LED lights and there's a few different settings and you can see it there you can just arrange bend it to however you need to get it um, into the position that you want over your stitching I still haven't got quite the right 
there we go and that way it's not blinding him but I can still knit or stitch in front of the TV or on the plane or whatever without bothering anybody um, so how good's that I got that on Amazon so I got that on Amazon if I remember I'll put a link to it down below in the description box so if you hit on the little down arrow below this video there's a description box and that'll have all my details in there as well as um, I'll try and put a link in for this one that I bought on eBay it was like I think it was 18 bucks or something $18 something yeah and um, so that was well worth it so apart from stuff that I'm going to show at the very end on my shop update um, that's all the cross stitch related stuff so if you don't want to stay um, thank you so much for coming and I look forward to having you come back hopefully for the next video um, but if you would like to stay I'm going to chat now about my knitting um, and then I'll go on to um, some acquisitions and some shop update so you would have recently seen me finish my um, crunkled sock which is a pattern by uh, Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears podcast um, so I finished this with just some random pink yarn I had in my stash I think it was pink baby yarn Peyton's baby yarn um, four ply and then this beautiful um, yarn from Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit in the UK and it's just a gorgeous colour. I can't remember the name of the colourway actually. I probably mentioned it on an earlier video. But anyway, so I'd finished this sock and I can't find my second sock blocker but I finished the second sock so I have a pair of socks. I haven't been able to wear these, I blocked them. <laughs> um, but I haven't worn them because I wanted to show you first um, so yeah so they've been sitting here finished for a couple of weeks now um, so I'll just show you that up close it's a really nice texture that it causes the fabric to look all bubbly and I just did a normal um, just a standard heel flap and gusset and these ones I made too big I wasn't familiar with Kay's patterns and this is the biggest size this is a large and it's a bit too big for me but that's okay because they're just going to be comfy bed socks that aren't too tight they're just comfy and cozy um i might even be able to wear them with some shoes you know like if i've got um boots or uh gum boots or something but anyway these will be bed socks and they're so nice um and the pattern i just um did the contrast cuff in the pink yarn with the contrast heel and that was just my usual heel flap and gusset I get the pattern out of a book that I've shown before um, that is like a great book for beginner sock knitters it was produced by Knit Picks I think um, and then Kay has this wonderful umbrella toe um, so I did that I love the look it's such a nice round shape I hate some of the other sock toes they look too pointy <laughs> um, this is a beautifully done round umbrella style toe um, so I really like that I love this pattern so easy to memorize um, once you do it it's you don't have to think very hard while you're stitching so you can, it's a great travel sock project um, but you get some texture out of it and a bit of definition something different out of your sock rather than plain so yes yeah, so I really enjoyed that and oh, I've started knitting a sock and I've left the darn sock inside. I might have to pause and come back with that. Yeah, so I'm really happy with that. So that's one pair of FO'd or fully finished socks. And then my other FO is, um, so recently I've got to know Rodney, who is um, a guy who's out, always out the front of our office selling the big issue in the morning. He's out there at the crack of dawn, like I get to work at before seven and he's out there. Um, I only go on a Tuesday into the office 
um, it was Mondays, but I've changed it to Tuesday because Wayne has swapped his days from home around. And anyway, Rodney's out there at the crack of dawn, pretty much rain, hail or shine. Always pleasant, always friendly, doesn't mind. You know, like he, he's always happy and positive, even if you don't buy off him. And nobody buys off him much because they don't have cash on them. Um, and he, he likes to at least try and sell three copies of the big issue so that he can buy himself breakfast. So sometimes I've bought him breakfast at the cafe at our building. Um, but I want to do something nice for him because it's winter and it's cold and he's homeless. Um, so I knit him a hat. So this is the Sweet Felicia hat pattern by Jodie Brown Designs. Um, Jodie is um, part of the Grocery Girls podcast. If you haven't seen that, um, definitely check it out. But I think pretty much everybody in the knitting community now knows about the Grocery Girls. They're wonderful. I love the top of the hat. The cables make it look so pretty um, so yeah so this is just a really simple cable pattern so if you've never done cables before this is a really good one to start with it's very easy to memorize uh, after you've done it once which that's a repeat that's one repeat after you've done it once you don't need to look at the pattern again till you're going to do your decreases so it's a great potato chippy hat to knit and it looks fabulous and people will think wow like cables you're awesome <laughs> um this is on dk weight or eight ply yarn that i had left over from a baby blanket for our nephew james um so this is i just decided to pick green different shades of green and i had this gray um so i think it's turned out really nice it's super soft because it's baby yarn it's um knit picks um swish dk if you're looking for that yarn so it's very reasonably priced and it it's fabulous in this hat it's going to be so nice and cozy especially with the cables that makes it a nice cozy fabric um, but yeah I really love the cables they look so good and it was great see I didn't have a whole you know set amount for a hat but by going into my stash I managed to whip up a hat out of what I had available so definitely give that a go you don't have to have a lot of yarn and um, it's supposed to be a two inch I don't know if that's exactly two inches it might be a bit longer two inch um, ribbed two by two rib um, on the cuff of the hat yeah so it was just after one two three see doing it in stripes per repeat makes it really easy to follow the pattern because you can just go after you do the first one you got to do four more and um, so it makes it easy to follow so that's my finished object so on Tuesday I'll wrap this up in, I've got some tissue paper and a little card and for Rodney and I'll wrap this up and give that to him he always gives you a joke and it's always the same one bless him and um, so his joke is his joke is, um, did you hear about the new restaurant on the moon? The food's great, but there's no atmosphere. <laughs> so every time he says it to me, even though I've heard it like a million times, I, um, I always laugh as if it's the first time I've heard it. God love him. So hope, hopefully he will like the hat. And I wanted on that same line, I had an idea to do a cowl. Um, so I've recently made the um, snuggle down cowl and I thought that'd be really nice in that um, cable pattern. So I started knitting, but I'm gonna pull it undone because it's not, it's not wide enough. So I, because it's DK weight and not four ply yarn, I didn't account for needing, I didn't add on enough stitches when I cast on to make it wide enough. So I need to add at least another 20 to 30 stitches. And that should be just enough once you stretch it out. Like that should be plenty to just be a nice snuggly cowl around your neck. Um, but the, I'm going to do, do it in the cable pattern. So I'm just working out how many stitches I've got to add in order to get this cable pattern because um, 
Yeah, and I'm just going to try and roughly, I'm just going to use the leftover yarn I have. So I have this mustard. I've got the grey. I've still got some dark green and the lighter green. So see if I can get a cowl out of that. And I do have some pale blue if I run out um, of yarn. So that's on. I think these needles, I did the cuff on, um, I think they're four millimeter or four and a half millimeter 16 inch circular needles and then the hat itself I thought it was six millimeters but I think it's actually five millimeter 16 inch circular needles um, and this is the knit picks swish DK that's the yarn I used and the gray is called dove heather yeah so that's the yarn I used and I oh this is this is the blues that I have and I also have this orange so that would also make a really nice hat it's so soft or a cowl whatever so yeah so I'm just gonna pause and I'll go back and grab my socks that I'm knitting on my hand dyed yarn that I dyed myself okay I've got my um, socks that I started <coughs> come on stop it so this is a cute um, DPN holder that I got from give me a crown on Etsy an Australian company isn't it cute little sheepy and then it's just plain calico on the inside with these little bright orange um, buttons snaps so these oh, I thought my DPM was gonna go down the um, I just lost my needle downstairs <laughs> it fell through the veranda <laughs> to the front veranda uh, luckily it didn't go through the veranda down there because it would be lost forever <laughs> i'll go and retrieve it later um so this yarn is my blue hydrangea yarn colorway that i dyed myself um on 100 merino from nundle wool mill woolen mill i should say it's really pretty sort of like blue with a hint of lavender and this was going to be a cabled sock pattern by Kay Jones but it was just oh, so slow it was really well it looks cabled but it's not it's these twisted stitches and they were just doing my head in my head just wasn't in the right place because we you know with pearl and everything so I ended up I started out in that pattern, but I I, tra I didn't undo it. I just kept going, but I transitioned to to the crunkled sock pattern. <laughs> so there is a bit of a a whoop whoop at the beginning. So this has a really long cuff on it, which you can fold down. So it's just a ribbed cuff. What did I do? Two by two rib. And this you can see the color change in there. You can see little flashes of different color. Well, it's the same colour, but tonal. And so that folds down. And you can see here, this is where this pattern was coming along. But it was just so slow, I went, I'm never going to get these socks finished if I keep with this pattern. So I just went, oh, well, I'll just, <laughs> I'll just start doing the crunkled sock pattern. So that's what it is. So these will be a bit wonky, but who cares? I'll, you know, no one's going to look to that degree when they're on my foot. And it's my prerogative whether I start again and I didn't want to because I just knit this massive cuff and I'm like I'm not pulling that under but it's nice to see my yarn that I dyed myself knit up and that's what it looks like so if you're interested I do have um, two skeins of this colorway in my shop in my Etsy shop um, and it's really pretty it's just subtle tonal color changes it's not too dramatic so far it'll be interesting to see once I get to the um, this part of the sock where it's all stocking at under here to see what you know the stripiness what shows up if it's very distinct or not um, but I'll be sure to share that with you on my next video so that's working up really nicely these are I think 2.25 millimeter DPNs I love these ones they're short 
and I like the wooden ones, they're more um, easy on my hands. So I've still got some of this other yarn left from my other socks, so I'll put that into a scrappy blanket that I'm doing or whatever. Yeah, and this is the name of the shop that I got the DPN holder from on Etsy. I'll put the details down below. So that's that. So that's all my knitting. Um, so now it's just recent acquisitions and shop update. Let's have a sip of my drink. It's almost, well it's 12 o'clock here now so Wayne's just going to have a shower and I'll finish this video and then we'll have a barbecue lunch so that'll be nice and have steak. Um, okay, let's move this stuff over to here and put that stuff there out the way so I don't lose it. Okay, where to begin? Let me do recent acquisitions. So, excitingly, a family friend came up from New South Wales to visit her daughter and son-in-law um, and she came up with a husband um, in their camper van and so they were able to bring up a heap of stuff for me from my mum that she'd been putting away but we haven't seen her since 2019 basically because of COVID. So she brought up that stuff which includes some pumpkins, some glass pumpkins that Ali Jane uh, Travel Accessories gave me um, that she didn't want anymore and they're beautiful um, handmade glass pumpkins and one looks really Halloweeny it's got black in it it looks really cool so I'll show you that at the end I'll do a little video because I didn't want to bring them out here in case I dropped them but also um, Carolyn gave me um, a heap of her stuff out of stash that she's not going to use anymore so she used to make um, beautiful um, fringed old-fashioned Victorian um, lampshades and stuff so she had a lot of trims and lace and everything that she used to some of it she or used as it was in the color it was and some she dyed up herself um so and heaps of beads and stuff so i got lots and lots of stash which is wonderful because that's very expensive to go out and buy all that so i'm very appreciative of it so i've got this lot of loose lace and it doesn't look a lot but holy heck there's quite a few meters in that black lace there so that's that one so these will be made on project bags that I make um, so I'll use that up or sometimes the thinner stuff that's not as wide I'll be able to use on um, FFOing um, you know little pillows and things um, then there's this gorgeous lace look at that beautiful there's quite a few meters in that. Then there's this pretty pale pink lace. This is some ribbon I saved from the flowers Wayne gave me for our eighth anniversary. So he was away at the time and he sent me a beautiful bunch of flowers, which if I remember, I'll put a photo in at the end here. Um, I'm not sure this one is like a mustardy color, brownie. Color. and this is a really wide piece that she's taken off some clothing or something and repurposed it that's the outside isn't it gorgeous so I'll be able to use that on a project bag or something very shabby sheep um, some little blue trim lace some stuff off some clothing that I can repurpose some stuff and a heap of uh, red lace and different sort of charcoal grey black lace and some cute green frilly lace so that's in that basket and then I have, I'm not going to show you at all, 
That is full of trim. It's huge and heavy. Like I'm talking lace for days. I even got a whole bucket of lace and trim. Look, there's that cute little cotton lace trim and some even some ginormous pillow type bobbly trim all sorts so there's that and lots of um, braiding my mum sent me Some button, button, blah, blah, I can't talk buttons. How cute are these? These would make cute needle minders actually, these little buttons, wooden buttons. So I might make those to needle minders. Keep some for me and share some in my shop. And I got some, Kazzy gave me some patterns. So I thought I'll keep these because um, our nephew might, these might come in handy for our nephew when he gets a bit older for like school plays and things like that. Oh, I had to keep this one, even if I frame it, even though it's looking like dead. How cute are those skirts? Not that they'd fit me, but I couldn't part with that pattern. And then these ones, I thought even though they're a bit 80s, you could still use it for the shorts or something so I kept that just in case um, these ones are good because they've got some button-down boys shirts and some shorts which might come in handy for him when he's older I can make him something and I kept this one because it had some blouses in which even though they look a bit 80s you could probably do dodge them up to make them look more modern so I just got Shed loads, shed loads of stuff. Yep, absolute mozza. So thank you, Carolyn, or Kazzy as I say. Um, so that's wonderful. I'm so I love getting stash. So my other acquisition was I bought this American Patchwork and Quilting. Um, it's issue number 170. And on page, what is it? Where did I see it? Page 20 and 21, this lady's house, they do like a little issue on her house because she has beautiful quilts. I mean, look at that birdhouse. What the? Who'd have thought to put it in your house? But it looks really cool. That looks amazing. I mean, that's a really big, fancy birdhouse. But on page 20. And 21 of that issue she has some gorgeous Quaker and other colorful samplers there's no patterns so don't get too excited and I haven't read the article to see if she mentions any patterns some of them are her own cross stitch patterns Um, her name, Susan Ake, A-C-H-E. Um, her, she's got on Instagram, Yard GRL 60. So I'll put that detail down the bottom if you want to follow her Instagram and then you might be able to get her patterns for the Quaker ones that she's designed herself. But I mean, gorgeous. Look at that cute kitty. But look at those samples. <gasps> the colours she chose. And she stitched those with Oracle which is a quilt um, thread. So yeah, beautiful. Plus I got it because there's some cute quilt blocks in there um, that I thought might come in handy for doing, they might be a bit beyond my knowledge or experience base, but maybe for Leanne's quilt, I don't know. So, um, yeah, so I got that. 
And I want to say, lately I've been stitching my smalls on this small thing. It's not very good quality. It's just a cheap one from Spotlight. But you know what? It's been really handy. Um, easy to carry around and pop in your project bag. And okay, you've got to move it every five minutes. But on a small, it doesn't matter. And I was thinking I might actually use this um, sometimes on my bigger projects where I've got a lot of fabric because um, it might make it easier than trying to fit it on a big frame because I find it hard for my arms to get sore. So that's that. Now um, shop update. So I've nearly got these medieval style metal um, shawl pins in and they've sort of got an uh, Art Nouveau feel to them, these ones. I have some others on order that I'm waiting to come in that are gold. Look. Um, but these are really cute. So I've got two of these on offer in my shop at the moment. You might see more come in later. Um, so they're really cute. Great for your knitted garments or crocheted shawls or whatever. Um, oops. Or if you're into co um, cosplay or costuming, these are great. They're not very heavy, so they're not going to drag too much on your yarn and really nice I might have to keep one of these aside for myself so that one and then I made a heap of scissor fobs lately and I've put them in my shop recently and by the way I also created a new shop page so that you're not bombarded by shop stuff if you're not interested in it um, but I haven't got I was gonna I had the idea that I would because I've always got on my feed, it says, because it's a business page, it says um, on my current Instagram account, Lisa Love Stitching, it said, oh, do you want to open an Instagram shop? And I'm like, oh, that's great, but that's part of my personal stuff as well, so it doesn't really work. So that's why I opened up my shop page, which is Lisa Love Stitching under, underscore shop. However, because I don't have any followers on there much, <laughs> I've got eight followers. Uh, I don't have enough people to warrant them letting me have an Instagram shop. <laughs> so maybe one day in the future I'll have an Instagram shop which will allow me to link photos to my Etsy shop or website if I get one later on. Um, but yeah, anyway, so if you would like to follow me I'd really appreciate it on Lisa, Lisa Love Stitching underscore shop. I'll put the details below. That way um, if you want to see what I have in my shop That'll be on there. And then if you just want to see what I'm working on craft-wise and life-wise, um, then that'll be on my Lisa Love Stitching page. I will have a link to my Etsy shop on both pages nonetheless. So this is a cute little mini or shorter. I had a complaint that my scissor fobs were too big. <laughs> um, so I've made them shorter. Um, so... Here's a cute one that's purple with a little a butterfly in it and crystal beads. So that's in my shop now. I've got ones like these. So this one's a bit longer. That one's a shorter one. Because sometimes you don't want a really long one, I guess. Um, this one's a Christmassy one with a candy cane. Bit different Christmassy feel with the pink crystal beads. There's another one like that. Oh, the candy cane one also has a little um, zipper pull up for your project bag that matches the scissor fob. So those are sold as a set. And there's another one. This one's got a little charm on the bottom. Pink charm with silver. I've got... Um, a blue Christmas candy cane scissor fob. more of these um, project bag zipper pulls and scissor fobs. This scissor fob has a flower 
on the bottom. This was a little zipper pull and it's got a little star and a love heart. They're all crystal beads there. Here's a cute matching zipper pull for your project bag and scissor fob. So some of these are sold as sets in my shop. <coughs> See, these are my longer scissor fobs with the teapots and the tea bags, so they're a lot longer compared to not huge, but they yeah, they're longer because some people didn't like it, it was too long. But I mean, they're great because you, I find the long ones are good because if you're ferreting around in your project bag or whatever, you can find it much easier when you've got a longer scissor pull. Um, but I guess it makes it harder if you just want to display it. But they're really cute, those little teapot scissor fobs. Got this red and gold one with a bell. There's another blue, navy blue scissor fob with the teapot. I've got a purple candy cane Christmas scissor fob. So that's cute. And these are other ones that I did ages ago that are teapot ones that are in my shop. So they're really pretty. Um, there's another golden red one. And there's a little um, flower project bag zipper pull. And then, holy hell, <laughs> I've got a heap of zipper pulls here. Oh my goodness. There's some yellow and orange and some blues and red and green. So they're all in my shop. And these um, little project bag. You, I have these listed as thread keeps. So you could put them in, on your thread keep if you want something different than a cabochon. Pendant, but they'd also make really great um, project bag um, little zipper pulls because they've got the smaller um, parrot clip on there for putting on your zipper. So really pretty. Or crystal beads. And I just dropped one. Sorry. I don't want the dog to eat it. Okay. And then lastly... I've got these little zipper pulls as well with sun, sunshine and cloud, so they're really pretty. So there are heaps in my shop. Check it out. <laughs> I don't want to cart them around forever. It'd be great if you wanted to buy them. <laughs> and there's a, a varying prices because some have Swarovski crystal beads and crystal pearls in and some don't. Um, so there's varying prices, so I think that keeps it open to different people that, you know, you can afford different things. So there's something in there for everyone in my shop, so check it out. And don't forget, I've got these cute um, spring ducky and little flower um, counting pins in my shop as well. Um, these duckies can also um, be shawl pins because I've got little caps on the end. So you can also use them as a shawl pin for your knitting or crochet scarf or something. Um, but they also can be used as counting pins. Um, and I have these still left over, these teapot um, counting pins, which I may relist in my shop. I need to get them back into the shop and so there's blue two yellow one blue one red so they'll be going into the shop later now i have these outlandish one scissor fobs i'm just going to show you that's the last thing to show you um because they're pretty out there <laughs> they i reused Cassie had some um vintage brooches um, and retro brooches that no longer worked as a brooch so i've made these um I had these pendants, Diamante pendants, 
so I decided to put them on the ends of scissor fobs. So these are for the people that like go big or go home. <laughs> so they're not super long compared to the others, but they've just got this big pendant on the bottom. So this is a purple one with a Swarovski crystal pearl um, and crystal beads. Oops. And, oh God, come on. And the diamante circle at the bottom. This is really good for in your bags, easy to find. So I've got one in purple and one the same in pink. And I've got one with a love heart on and it's in blue with a little love heart crystal. And they all have, what's that? That one's got gold. That's got gold and that's a silver. So two gold and one silver parrot clip. But they are so cute. So they're going to go in my shop later today, hopefully. So that's all, folks. That's everything I've got to share with you. Um, it's time for lunch. So I'm going to go now and help organise that. And I'll catch you all next time. And hopefully, I promise, hopefully this time it will only be two weeks. <laughs> that you have to wait for a video um, and I also forgot to mention before I go um, the last couple of episodes I have added closed captions now I didn't get time to go through it all in 100% detail so what it does is um, YouTube you can choose to add closed captions and it will it will try and put in to Writ, um, subtitles everything that you say as you say it for people with hearing impairments but sometimes YouTube videos don't hear correctly so there might be some weird things said in there that aren't what I said I have tried to go through and at least fix up most of the punctuation but not all and at least check that the, the wording makes sense um, and going forward from this video onwards I will sit and go through the whole lot of the closed captions and make sure that they're available so that people with a hearing impairment can still enjoy my floss tube and share the love of stitching with me um, and you know makes it available to more people so I hope um, if you know anyone who does have a hearing impairment you can let them know that my video will now have closed captions um, so yeah so happy stitching um, and I'll see you next time. Bye.